Well, it's cold, finally. January 9th, up here in a cedar tree. Finally gravitated to hunting on the food plots. Uh, tomorrow night's the last night. So if I get a chance to shoot a decent buck, I will. A small buck, they walk. Mature does, they walk, because that's three deer right there. Possibly may shoot a yearling just for some meat, but that's not a guarantee either. It, uh, it's cold. Northwest wind, 25, 30 miles an hour. Temperatures probably in the teens and dropping. Going to go to one or two below zero tonight. And tomorrow night will be 2015 season wrapped up. So let's sit back and see what these uh, barascas do. And this is late season, folks. Don't make any mistake about that. Uh, I'm covered up. I can endure. It, uh, you can hunt it in comfort out of a tree. Uh, if you have to go in a blind, enclosed blind, I understand that. I want you to. That's your choice of hunting. Keep warm. At least you've got another day out in the field. As a hard-headed old man like me, I prefer to climb a tree. And uh, but they like say that's not mandatory. And if you're in an enclosed blind, more power to you. Uh, wish you success, and let's get on with the hunt. And it's—I don't know if you can see that breath, but it's really cold. <laughs> well, as you can see, those barascas lettuce types are doing still holding their own and uh, still got plenty of sugars plenty of carbohydrates and protein out there uh, with the sugars the deer will be seeking out more than the protein right now but <coughs> that's your pure attraction January 9th and still a lot of green. Plus, there's a mixture in there with some tall tine tubers in there. And uh, that uh, pan over here, bear with me, it's a little windy. Still got a green crop out there. It's uh, pure attraction from Whitetail Institute up here. In Southern Iowa, January 9th, 2016. Let's see what attracts. To me, personally, this is why I plant food plots. I'm trying to keep the deer in this area, not particularly on my farm, but in the overall area that the deer live in here, and that could be a square mile. Uh, food is getting scarce, and other people around me will benefit from my efforts. It's just not a me thing, because if I keep the people's deer healthy, come next season, other people will benefit from my effort. Had I sat on my ass, as so many do, and ask what's in it for me, well, you wouldn't be looking at that green field right now. Yeah, probably other people shot deer off that. But you know what? I put back. And that's all that matters to me, is I put back. Late seed food plot. Next year's Pope and Young Deer.
I just got a good book. I don't know how many points it was. This is the ninth day of January. I'm cold. I'm really cold. That buck come in. I'm going to go look for him here in just a minute. All right. Waited all year for a shot in a book like that. He, he was a pretty good buck. Not a monster by any means. But it's the ninth day, and I put a pretty good hit on him. So I'm gonna go get down and go, go get him. It, uh, it's 20 to five right now. So I'm gonna go get on the ground. I seen it, the arrow hit right where I wanted it to. Got it on video, and Let's rock and roll. We're gonna go after him. The arrow's right over here. There's a complete pass through. He didn't go far. And it's cold out, ladies and gentlemen. But that's what you call keeping on, keeping on. The last time you seen me kill something, it was 130 degrees. That arrow that I just shot was the same arrow that I shot that antelope with at 20 yards and it was a long season but I wouldn't have it any other way most people are crying in their beer stay the course do it the melee way you'll bring home the venison one way or the other and if you don't you'll still experience fabulous memories out here in mother nature's world and it's cold tonight, so let's go find that deer. Here is the arrow. Blood soaked from one end to the other. The Baraskas have plenty of blood on them tonight. Lots and lots of blood as they ran down through here. 100 grain muzzy. I really enjoy sharing these experiences with my YouTube followers. There was an old scrape that he probably worked a day or two ago. But when it's late season, you got blood on the, the snow on the ground, the blood really pops out. And like I say, I can't emphasize the work and the effort that goes into filming these by yourself and I've had shots that I had to pass up because they weren't on camera but tonight it was on camera and it was up close and it was cold and I wouldn't have it anyway that's the melee way the hard way blood 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 this deer couldn't have went very far and it, you can hear the snowpack under my feet crunching because it's cold. I mean, it's really cold. And it's going to go below zero tonight. He stayed right on this trail. Pretty easy to follow it. <laughs> we haven't found it yet. Now, my old saying is it ain't yours until you put your tag on it. But uh, I got every inkling that that's what's going to be at the end of this trail. Keep in mind that for every pound of body weight, they have to lose a third of that in blood. So if you had a 200 pound deer, you're gonna have to lose a third of that. And you know, it's spewing out here on the ground. He's already went farther than I thought he would have. One thing about it, I ain't cold no more. But he definitely has went farther than I thought he would have went. 
But you're right on the trail with me. I'm glad we got the snowpack. Lots and lots of blood. It looks to me... I, I just can't believe... It came over here. I did not think this would be this hard. Oh my god, he jumped the fence. This is not what I anticipated. To wind chill values of 20 to 28. Well, there you have it, folks. I'm sitting in the cabin. You see the heat ain't on. Uh, shot that deer last night. I'm going to let to follow it up this morning. I have no idea what we're in for. But the last time you see me do a follow-up deer is after I sat in the blind one. It was 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's actually 131 degrees difference in temperature this morning. So we're going to venture out and see what happens. You just got to be a bow hunter. You just got to love it. <laughs> From 130 to minus 1. Well, let's go out and do the follow-up. Right now, we're half a mile from where we shot that deer. And it's still putting out blood. Oh, so, lucky we had snow, I tell you. Because it's been tough going. But with that snow cover, you can see it's still bleeding. Oh, onward and upward. We still have good blood. I was assuming that it was headed for this big ditch up here. As you can see, well maybe you can't, but we're tracking blood all the way. And uh, we're well over a half a mile from shot. Just got my heart going. Must have stopped here for a bit. And, uh, I hope that's in there. Very hard to see in these viewfinders. But there's quite a bit of blood there. A little bit of pooling right there. Oh, we keep on going. Finally, at this point, the blood is getting down to that size. I don't know whether it's freezing up on the outside of the deer. I know last night my my pants did I went through the water severely cold got my heart going again it's back in towards I figured it's headed to bed to bed in this ditch real deep with the north wind blowing over it unfortunately as you'll see that's not what happened right here it must have stood again and what amazes me it headed out right across that that open pick cornfield. I would have swore it was going to bed in that thick ditch with the north wind. And um, there's a small rub there. But it literally broke out. It went right. Now it's heading southeast. And it's still cold out. So let's get to moving. Now I went to a trail that a blind man could have followed on the original impact. This is, we're following its, bleeding in its footsteps. I hope you can see some of that minuscule blood right there. I'm trying to get down there. Oh, we're porch. You know, we're just going literally dot to dot right now. This is a huge cornfield. This blood here, I assume, would have been the, the, if it stopped here, possibly laid down in this grass. And it's really getting skimpy to follow. Now we're over three quarters of a mile. So, what well, it turned look like he's going to follow it up and I don't know, it's become quite a lesson and I want to share it with you. And I took off up through here. It's going straight uphill.
right out here in the open cornfield. Amazing. Oh well, every time you lose an arrow, you never know. But that was some pretty good blood right there. And I had to spend some considerable time either laying down or standing there, one of the two. Well, let's keep on keeping on. Once it gets out, that's, I've tracked it that far. And that's a mile or more. And uh, it's totally amazing. Totally amazing. Uh, we're going to go down and it's in this big ditch. There's one dot of blood right at the end of my finger. And we're over a mile away. And I'll check that distance with my GPS. Just got down into this ditch. And hopefully this will be where we find it at. This track is coming up through here. And I hope I can't see it, but there's some blood right on the other side of that weed right there. And there's some more blood up here. As you can see, it's starting to get less and less. Now we've taken this blood trail a solid mile, if not more. I'll know for sure. There's some blood on that ice right there. Come up through here. And I wanted to get this done before the light gets weird. Anyhow, let me get out of the shadow. You should be able to see all this blood right in there. Bunch of it in there. Real good blood. Not real good, but anyhow, I must have bedded down here right by the cedar tree. And uh, that's pretty much after he got up, I found one drop. But <laughs> that's amazing. Now you know you ain't gonna have as much blood because you already put a lot of it out. But I was hoping to find a deer in this bed. When he left that, that was one drop of blood that he got up out of the bed with. I couldn't find any blood at all from that bed. And Right there, I hope you can see that without a lot of shadow on it. I got it down to my finger. Was the last bit of blood I found. And we're well over a mile. Well, this is the way it goes. This is the blood from that deer. You know, I reckon I came up short on that. But I'd like to still put this on the, on the YouTube channel. Let me get that one guy out of the way. This is where that bed, that beer, deer, yeah, that beer bed. Wish I had a beer right now, too bad I don't drink. He's putting out a lot of blood, but it must have just been muscle blood, sure. It sure wasn't lung blood, and it definitely wasn't heart blood. Anyhow, I hope you learned something from that. Well, I hope you're all not too mad at me. Shot a perfect shot to me on the ninth. I'm not a bit about afraid of sharing my hunting successes and failures. If you hunt with a bow, this is some of the stuff you can expect. They don't always go down. I assume that deer, with the effort I put into it, is alive and still living. Couldn't find a body, ran out of blood. As you can see in the background, our efforts of our pure attraction, 
It's still bright green, and they're coming to it like flies on fresh poop. Well, I hope you enjoyed your season. Congratulations to people that got them, and you witnessed firsthand what can happen when you think you did everything right. You know, you know, you seen the shot I shot the, uh, on the closing night was a far cry from the accuracy that I shot the buck on the ninth with. And uh, get a sword out from it's going to be found in a very short time. When you lose an arrow, you never know. The event that you're about to see is it going to be a learning experience for everyone that's in archery or hunting for as that goes and we're all going to learn from what's going to happen here before your eyes and uh, I just want to go over that with you that tree in the background will play a part in it this 3D target is going to play a part in it and at the end of the, this video we're all going to walk away with a lot more knowledge Bow hunting is like a roller coaster. It has its highs and it has its lows. And you're about ready to see those unfold in front of you. So without any further to do, I'm going to climb up in the tree and do a couple of shots just to show you part of bow hunting, what can go awry in the real world. That's one. Loading it up. And, you know, trying to get this reenacted. There's perfect shooting. They're right in that shot there. That second shot was perfect. That second shot was the same shot that I put on that live deer. Here goes my last shot. Remember this is 12 yards. There you go ladies and gentlemen. We practice all year for that shot. Actually I wish my first shot was where it was on the reel deer. You know the old adage you are what you eat. Well, you're only going to be as good as your practice. These two shots right here would have been the high scoring shots in a game called 3D pop-up archery. And everybody would be high-fiving. This shot back here, same elevation, farther back. Would have been scoffed at. You know what? Once you've trained yourself to shoot there, it's pretty hard to break that habit at a moment. You're gonna go right there. Because you've trained yourself all summer long and all winter long in archery shops and on the 3D courses to shoot for that spot. But you just witnessed 101. If I had have shot that deer back here, Farther back, out of the 10 ring, out of the 12 ring, out of the 14 ring. I had been standing over that buck on the night. But it played out pretty good. Like I said, I wrote a subscriber. Hollywood couldn't made a better script than how this came out. Because like I said, on the onset, my channel is a giving back channel. And I try to educate all age groups of hunters. From the youngest to the beginner to the oldest. I doubt if I resonate too much with the pro staff shooters, but uh, anyhow, sooner or later, if you stay in archery long enough, you're going to make a bad shot. Learn how to deal with it, get over it, move on. So, these are all right. These are perfect. This is for real. Something, every time you go to the field, you're going to think about that right there. Right there is what you're going to think about. And I guarantee you, most of them would call the one on the right, out of here. But that would be the most deadly. You've seen what happened on the two on the front. 
Well, that's it from a non-typical Norwalkian. And thanks for watching, and I hope you all learned something from this. And I'm not one bit embarrassed about sharing this footage with anybody. Because I want you to learn from mistakes, and I make them right along with you.